Business success is directly related to your niche. What is your niche? Your niche is this problem that exists that only you can solve it. We want to cross over to the session of question and answer. And I want to maybe take the privilege, first of all, of, uh, you know, I, I know you have so many questions, but to, first of all, just throw in one question to each of the panelists. And I'll start with Catherine Nyoike. And, um, you know, you talked, based on the PowerPoint presentation, uh, a lot of things that you're doing with the women and empowering them to set up businesses. And my question, maybe which, maybe a question that any other lady is asking here, is, it, is, 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 is this just for women? And if it is not, how do we join in to get the training that you give us? Thank you. It's not just for women. If the woman flourishes, it empowers the man, it empowers the children. If the man flourishes, it empowers the woman, it empowers the, the family, the children. So uh, what we can say is that Empower Women is a movement of both men and women who are ready to empower. And we say empower women because you'll find that statics, statistics will tell you, if you look at the board members in most boards in Kenya, less than 20% are women. And why aren't women there? One, most of them have maybe fallen out because of lack of opportunity. Because we come from a culture where not everybody valued education for women. Another thing is lack of skills yeah, and confidence. So that's why we have this platform. Because if you have the initiative and you get the resources and you get somebody, as Mr. Karundu has said, to hold your hand, you can move to any level. So empower women is for all. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Catherine. Um, to Patrick Kimani, you say that you wrote proposals to all manner of organizations, you know, that we have, some of us here, we just can't tell you, we have been trying to do the same thing. And we are hoping that a breakthrough will come. What would you, would you advise us? Is it good to write to these organizations? Because sometimes we think they have very huge budgets, and so we can always get some peace. And rarely do we hear people who have gotten it. And I think you didn't get it because you said you never got any breakthrough with them. Did you ever give up? And what would you advise the people here who, are, who have maybe tons of proposals they're about to send? Well, uh, I still write proposals, <laughs> but they are now demand-driven. Uh, you know, I changed the game. Initially, I used to go to them. Now they come to me. Uh, when I was going to them, uh, even I remember the, f the first meeting I went uh, in a government uh, forum, and we were saying, you know, there are so many organizations which are briefcase, and the government knows. Uh, so they were asking, now, Kemani from Kenya Livestock, uh, who is your constituency? Who do you represent? And I, you know, it, it dawned to me. I even asked myself, who do I represent? <laughs> Lily. I'm the CEO of Kenya Rice Talk Producers Vision. I'm here in the PS boardroom, uh, pushing the agenda of the farmers. And the maximum number of farmers I had then were 350. Then I'm claiming I'm National Livestock Producers Vision. So I had work to do. I went back, recruited, became relevant, I corrected agendas from the farmers, and then I came. And when you are correcting, you know, there are feelers all over. Uh, people feel you, you know, it's like a tsunami. Uh, people know you are doing something with farmers, you know. So when you come, even the Arua is there, you know, you have arrived. So you are representing a constituency, just like a member of parliament. So when, and you know, even these donors are on the ground, you know. So when they start seeing you on the ground, then when they have a project, they know the first point of call is Kemani's office. And then now you have the muscle to dictate, you know, according to your strategic plan. You say me, even if you have, a, a, you know, a million dollars or, you know, a, a 10 million dollars, for example, you know, me, I'll focus on this area. 
you know, and we have uh, re refused to work with uh, big money and big donors because we feel it is not to the beneficial of our core membership. Because once you lose your members, or once you lose your core, it's like losing your family. So you have to safeguard your family. You have to safeguard what made you as a business. And our, we are made by the farmers. So if your project is, is to come, for example, and scheme off my farmers, even if it's $10 million, we won't take it. So I think we changed the game plan. We became visible, vibrant. We became self-reliable. Then, and when you are self-reliant, uh, you know, uh, then you can only be engaging on a partnership basis. But when you are, you know, coming with a ball to borrow, then you you'll be working on terms and conditions of the of, of the donor. Mm. Yeah. Wow! Thank you so much, Patrick. Um, James Karundu, yeah. you, you talked about support, yeah. and you know some people say that once bitten, twice shy. Some of us have gone to seek support by sharing an idea with someone who end up discouraging you. Then after two months, you see the idea flourishing somewhere else. I don't know where you would tell us to cut the lines or we just trust some people. What, okay. What's your advice on that? This is a fantastic question because number one, there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> so there's nothing new under the sun. What you're thinking about exists in one way or the other. So the question then is what do I bring on the table? So the key thing to remember is this. Mm -hmm. Even if somebody takes your idea, there's one thing that cannot be ripped off out of your idea. Your energy cannot, and your passion cannot, okay? Mm -hmm. And we've seen it, even with big companies. Uh, you know, you go start your own thing, or you go and start something similar. So if somebody ripped off my idea, I would simply go and start another one and a new name, because I know they cannot execute it the way I can, uh -huh. okay? But let me still give you the straight answer to that. Huh? in terms of seeking advice and going sharing everything. Let's put it this way. You don't go blabbering all your ideas to everybody. Can we just agree on that? Okay. <laughs> so that's on the one extreme. But on the other one is that before you go sharing that deep idea with somebody, mm. do your research. Mm. It has to be a trusted advisor. And even with trusted advisors, there's always going to be that one or two, who will not be truly genuine. But in terms of asking for advice, um, you still need to ask for advice. Yeah. yeah. So keep your idea under wraps. There are some elements of the idea that you can protect, um, including trademarking. So if somebody has a fabulous name, if somebody has just a fabulous name, even if you haven't started the business, what you need to do is get the domain. What you need to do is uh, get a lawyer or try and do through the e-government portal to trademark that particular name or phrase. That's, a f that's how you start thinking about it. And again, um, don't give all your ideas to everybody. Let it be with trusted advisors. And even if you're interacting with a mentor or somebody, take your time to study. So not on day one, you go and give the whole idea there. No, no, no. So go a little bit easy, mm. but you still need to share the idea with people. Wow. wow. Thank you, James. I know I asked that question for many others, <laughs> is it? All right. I want to open the floor now for questions. Uh, I'll take three at a time. I'm a student at Matibi India University. As a marketing student, what we mostly do is we do something called market research. We try identifying the gaps that are in market and we try to come out with solution. How can we fill the gaps? I'm going to talk about a real life situation. I come from Nakuru County. From where I come from, we border the three constituency. We have Rongai, we have Kawa, Subukia, and we have Bahati. I have a group that we registered, I think, last this month. It is called Nakuru Scorers Titans Youth Group. So I want your 
idea and your input and maybe even a deal on it. Can I answer? Most, because, yeah. Can I answer because I have the mic? Oh, before, 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 before. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> can I oh, before. Oh, you have another one. No, shoot. I have not asked the question. So, <laughs> so where I come from? Mostly, we do some business. The business involves in Rongai constituency. Most of the people there keep livestock. In our area, Subukia, mostly we plant crops. So we do this, maybe from January to April. We buy cattle from those areas, our goats, our sheep. Maybe we come with them to our places. We have to keep them for three months. We inject them with multivitamins. Maybe we bought, for example, I bought the cattle at 20,000. Within three, mo three months, it will be close to 40,000. That will be a double the price that I bought it with for just three months. Ask the question now. So here is the group. Mm -hmm. So we are asking, how can you advise us? There are no resources. We don't have resources. We are students. Most of us are students. And what I have observed, this is a day that can work. If we get people to support us and those who will advise us. And even I want you to comment on this. We have only two slaughtering houses. One is in Mogotio, and another is in, 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 in Bahati. How can we, maybe as a group, as young entrepreneurs, come up with a slaughterhouse, and how can you help us to come up with that slaughterhouse? Because it makes money. All right, OK. Patrick, there's a cocktail of questions there, just somehow. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to summarize, uh, summarize it by saying this. Mm. Uh, you are a young entrepreneur, and uh, you are on the right path. In fact, by the fact that you are in a group of people who are thinking to make money, you are in the right group. That is one. Number two, what I want you to remove from your mind now, that donor mentality. Sasa ju meona keropie ke mani tu saidie. You will never go anywhere. If you are in a group and you can buy a cow at 20, fatten it in three months and sell it at 40, your challenge is not the idea. Your challenge is support and resource and networks. We need to see, obviously, whether you are in a group, maybe you can have joint accounts, isn't it? Kimani and Karundu and Anne, or whatever. Ati Kweti or whatever. So we, start, we need to start there because your challenge may be is capital. And that is one, to expand. Number two, your challenge also is market. If you fatten it and you need to dispose it at 40, where do you dispose it to? Or when you want to slaughter it, uh, what are the, the, the code of conduct of uh, taking your cow or slaughtering it and uh, packaging it uh, to, to the market? So, so first of all, you need uh, to be assisted to, to connect with the financial world. Uh, and then you can get uh, concessional uh, loans which you, ca you can build because we want you to take money and use it to work for you. And at the same time, the person giving you money is making money on you. Uh, so it's not in an issue of donor you know, dependency here. At the same time, we also want your group uh, to be taken through the value chain of training so that even as you're progressing with your buying of cow and selling, you can diversify. Uh, maybe to value addition and also maybe from the cows to any other animal. Uh, so I think the, the, the answer to your question is that your help should come, in, should come from a training on financial and on market access. And then you'll be done. Thank you. Well, I see a very passionate man there. And maybe James, you could help him. Yes, please add something, especially yeah. on niche. Well, okay, there's something that he has said, which is representative of uh, the scenario with most people, which is lack of resources. Now, I need us to get the difference between two things. Resources and being resourceful. You may not have the resources, but you can be resourceful. Okay, so I would say, uh, remember we, say, we said 
everything starts with you. So it's about being innovative and being resourceful. And that is where you will find the niche. The research is good, uh, but for startups and small entrepreneurs, the best res research is to try it out. And now from there, you course correct. So resources versus being resourceful. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, well, what I wanted to say is, uh, and re-emphasize what he said, is resourcefulness. One of the challenges we are having is, we have the youth fund. Very few youth have gone to us for that money. You need to find out what structures do you require to create in your business so that you're able to access that, uh, that fund. Banks now have come lower to the ground. If you have your idea, put it in a proper plan, and you're able to show the banker that if they uh, inject money in and give you that, you'll be able to repay the loan, you'll definitely get the money. It's now available. Put in the structures, you'll get it. Well, but James, I would like to also you know, ask another question in line with what the gentleman asked, because I felt like he had a cocktail of ideas. Yes. You know, Slaughterhouse, he was talking about some other business and many other things. What would we advise to him in terms of niche that he talked about? Yes, um, I would look to see um, the positioning that would work well uh, for us. Um, and remember, you, you're being a problem solver. So, and also keeping in mind that they are, I'm getting that they are students, they are uh, from uh, various uh, places, maybe they come together in the group and they run this project. So that is a dynamic that has to be there. Um, so I would look to see um, which is the untapped area and where are we likely to get the highest returns. That is what I would look at. And uh, it is still tied in with the whole conversation of value chain, value addition, and so on and so on, because that is what creates uh, what they're offering to be very juicy for uh, a particular clientele or a particular target market. So uh, the research he's talking about has to be done, and we need to be resourceful and we need to explore. We need to see what's working out there. We need to see where the complaints are, what is not being served, and then from there you position yourself to serve that need. Well, there was a question here, right here at the front. Mine uh, narrows down to mentorship, and that is to Mr. Karundu. Uh, uh, how, do, how can you help the rich brains and the broke pockets in terms of, uh, in terms of mentorship? Because uh, you've told us that mentorship, a nice mentorship is that that is a must pay. So how can you help the rich brains and okay. the broke pockets? Great. Um, uh, back to resources and resourcefulness, but uh, I'll leave that conversation for now. Maybe I said, let me answer you directly. Uh, let me tell, tell you about what I personally do. Every last Thursday of the month, I offer a free talk, a free training. The other thing that I offer, again, for free, is free information using a newsletter. So, and there are many, there's, there's a lot of resources that's, uh, that is out there. So, and there are many people who will not demand uh, the payment first, okay? So be resourceful, but also as you get started, and I've worked with so many people who at first they couldn't afford my classes and my courses, okay? But they started coming for my free talks. It's a free talk. Last year, over five, 500 people came to my free talks. And I give fantastic content that you'd pay tens of thousands. So I do my free talk, and there's always an opportunity for us to continue working together, and that works. So I've not left people behind. If you're not able to come to my talks, I have my newsletter. Twice a week, I share fantastic information. I have a huge network of over, of over 4,000 subscribers. So for somebody who wants to get mentored, uh, there are many opportunities. Oh yeah, one more thing that I have is I have CDs, and I have DVDs, and I have books. On YouTube, you can get a few clips here and there. We have organizations, for example, now here at WTV, they could record the segments of that information, and then that information is available. So I hope this gives you a bit of hope that truly it is possible. 
And when one is ready, and this is the key thing here, you've got to pay for that service. You've got to, because if you're not willing to pay for something that is causing a transformation in your life, how can you expect that others will pay you? There's a whole spiral here that happens. So I always recommend start where you are. I offer scholarships. There are people who offer scholarships. So think of that word, resourcefulness. That if you want something, the doors, not all doors are locked. Not all doors are closed. So it is possible. Thank you. Let me take okay. this one first. My name is Marcy from Multimedia University. Mrs. Nyoike, you are empowering women who can access the internet, right? What about these women in the, village, in the villages? Sorry. I came from a school where girls were dropping out every day from, uh, because of early marriages, pregnancies. How are you reaching out to these women in the villages? Thank you. Thank you. That's a very good question. And uh, as I said, Empower Women is a platform. So within Empower Women, we also have organizations which are on the ground. So how are we assisting them? One, with ideas, sometimes with the funds when they are available, but mostly with the giving hope is about offering opportunities. Like if you go to the platform, you will find there's a place where you can be able to check what opportunities are there, who can come in, what, which NGOs are funding or uh, children who are in primary school. So you're able to get all those resources within the platform. And if you are qualified in terms of, if you're the person, the, the victim, and you put your case forward, you have more than 6,000 people who would be uh, willing to hold your hand to, to move the next level. So there's, there's a lot of hope. And what we are saying is, we are just creating an organized forum where you can be able to find the information and the people together. Please make your question very short and clear. I would like to ask what kind of uh, plan you have for mentoring the young people. I believe in Kenya we should start this mentorship quite earlier rather than you know, trying to train, uh, you know, train these people, mentor these people when they are old. We should start from high school, we should start from uh, you know, middle schools. So what plans do you have for such mentorship? So what plans do I, as James Karundu, have for that? Um, first of all, you will not be able to solve all the issues and all the challenges. Uh, I, I, as a mentor, will not be able to mentor people on all the issues. But there's an area where I have my zone of brilliance. There's an area where I have a passion. So I'm going to talk in that context. Two things. My other business that I run is a program that helps children improve their math and English. But the bigger story is helping, mentoring the children using uh, math, as math and English as they improve them, as we work to sort out the issues around that, that becomes a way to mentor them. So mentoring is not necessarily uh, a static thing with one way of doing it. There are many ways of doing it. The other thing that I'm doing, I as James, within the influence and the platform and what I have is training other mentors. I do have a program which is a training of trainers, which is something that it's a training of mentors. I do have courses that I have created around that. So I'm doing my bit and I want to encourage each and every one of you, even as part of a le your legacy, to mentor someone. Let's have a question. Uh, from the gentleman sitting at the front. Mine is not a question, it's actually a comment. I'm an entrepreneurship scholar, and uh, I would like to share uh, with the audience uh, my experience through my learning and what I've seen. A minute. Yes. Uh, many people focus on what they want to do instead of focusing what are the problems that exist in the world and which specific one can you solve? And whenever you solve that problem, somebody is willing to pay some money for that. 
that's what we need to focus on. Secondly, we will spend so much energy trying to look at how you are going to get funding for your project. Instead of looking at what are you good at and how can you sell that skill or that service and somebody will pay you. Then you can collect that payment over a time period for you to raise capital to do what you specifically want. So we need to be innovative. We need to be uh, persistent and we need to be very bold and brave. So nobody will help you. You will have to help yourself. We are going to hear some parting shots from our speakers. I don't know who wants to start. Maybe we could start with the lady <laughs> in the panel. As Mr. Karundu has uh, emphasized, how are you going to increase your potential to take yourself as an individual and your business to the next level? Focus on that, and this year will be exponential for you. Thank you, James. My parting shot is this. Friends, stop selling yourself short. Absolutely. Stop selling yourself short. Let this be the year of bold moves and bold steps. Success happens in leaps and bounds. Take bold steps. Trust yourself. Build that muscle of trusting yourself. And you will go far this year. For me, being a realist, uh, <laughs> I've seen it all. Uh, starting in, in 2007, Karundu, I, I was selling insurance, life insurance. And uh, I, you know, it was hell on earth. Uh, how do you sell life insurance to me? And I'm yet uh, to get something to take to my children in the evening. Uh, I've done a bit of walking uh, around the treasury there. So uh, last year I also graduated with the marketing, uh, master's in marketing. And I remember the first, uh, the, the first lesson we went into class and the teacher told us when she came on board and we were saying, well, you know how students uh, behave. And then we were expecting her to give us a, you know, a long lecture, long notes. And uh, she just told us, uh, uh, people, people are things. Yeah, you know, in short, people are networks. Uh, it's all about networks here. It's not how many uh, notes uh, I give you, how many assignments. Just get to know your next neighbor, network, get to know what Karundu does, or oh, my lady, what she does. That's where the business is. That's where the future is. So for me, the parting shot is that uh, if you are an entrepreneur, don't give up. Wow, amazing. A round of applause to our panel. That's it from us viewers at home and we have had enough from James Karundu, Patrick Kimani, Catherine Nyoike and of course Patricia who has also exposed to us about how we can start the level marketing and even introduce the business idea to us. You can grow and of course you can grow your strategy and make profits as much as you want. Always tune in to Business Redefined where we will train you and even tell you more on the pros and the cons or even getting into business. Remember there's always a niche cut out for you. Join us. Even next time, as we proceed more and teach you more. Thank you so much.